Okay, today at the shop, if you can't tell from what you're viewing already, we're about to work on an Xbox One Slim. Uh, we're actually going to be taking apart the disk drive itself today. Um, the woman who brought this into the shop, uh, her son actually put something in the disk drive. She didn't exactly mention what it was that was put in the disk drive. Um, not too many tools needed for taking apart an Xbox One Slim. Uh, we need a couple pry tools. You also don't want to mar the plastic. So I'm going to try to show you how to do that without uh, ripping the plastic all up. I've seen a few come in that customers try to take apart themselves and the plastic is destroyed. Now, I have to say on the first one of these I did, I marred the plastic a little bit. Uh, the Xbox One does not have any security bits really in it. It does use the Torx, so we're going to need some of those. A little rashing screwdriver. I would use a drill, but when I'm doing a YouTube uh, video, it doesn't really sound too good to have all that extra noise. Um, as systems go, this one is very well taken care of. Um, you actually couldn't even tell there's a kid in the household if she hadn't told me about it. Um... He stuck something in the disk drive. She was able to pull it back out. She just wants to make sure nothing's left in the disk drive. Did he put anything else in there? The disk drive is working, which the disk drive did read when I checked it out. So I assume it's just going to be a tear down, double check for the customer. Already pulled off the security seal. Um, but yeah, there's usually a security seal right here, and this is where you usually want to start with your uh, removal. So let's get a pry tool underneath there. Bring a little closer to the camera, so let's see if we can do this lower here. Don't have exactly the best mount system yet. I'm not one of those people that get enough YouTube views to actually, you know, make money off YouTube or anything. I just do it to help some people out. And also, it's kind of cool sometimes if customers are like, oh, well, can I watch my repair? I'm like, well, I upload a lot of them to YouTube. Go and keep an eye on my channel. see here we'll get one placed right about there and as you see I'm stressing the plastic but not marring it at all and then we stick another one down here and as we pop up well, okay maybe not okay let's see if we can get both of them going at once basically just got to get the plastic to flex enough move down here a little bit more I think that first one, because I did start trying to open this, and I thought about doing a YouTube video for it. I know there's a lot of Xbox Ones on YouTube already, disassemblies and whatnot. But I try to give a little more detail when I give a, do a video for someone. So that when they go to take it apart, they can uh, know kind of where to pry. Try to do it nice and slow, so it's not like, bam, 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 I got it apart. Oh, you didn't see how I did it? Well, you at least know that comes apart. Yeah, these ones are more of a pain than the original Xbox ones. There we go, we got our first pop. But you want to use two pry tools, that's the key. You want to pry in one spot to get some pressure on it, and then pry in another spot. Which this one here worked really well to pry on either side of this, because you got to get this little plastic piece. As you see, it snapped up out of the plastic now. That's what you really need to have it do. Once that's free... Should be pretty easy, pretty easy to get the rest of this open. Hopefully doesn't go to fall on me again. I actually got a little bit more room that way. Just had to rest it a little bit on something so it wouldn't finish breaking. Okay, now we can actually flip it up. And as you see, we can flip under. Oop, don't bump you. The edge here. And we just pry right along here. It 
should be a clip right along this edge somewhere. I have to go back to the top here. Get this one to pop a little bit more first. Each one is kind of its own beast. Sometimes they'll pop easy in one spot, not in another. I don't know if it just depends on how the, well they were some of the factory in the model or what. I've taken apart a few of these, and each one it's been a pain in the rear end every time. It's part of the reason why I want to do a video for everyone show some of the prize spots and what not to probably do. And there you see we got another pop going there. Let's get away from the other side. We'll start with the side by the power connector here and see if we can get a little bit better. The best key to this is go slow and work on what method works best and what seems to work. And it looks like the power connector side, since it's far enough away from where all the pressure is on this, is definitely the side to go with. Yep, there we go. And what I'm doing is just putting my flat uh, pry tool here in. Actually, metal spludger, really. Uh, plastic ones don't work so good on this. It usually just breaks them. The clips are that strong. And then I just basically push down using uh, this little lip here as a fulcrum point. And um, it bends the spludger a little bit because these are kind of thin, but it doesn't break them like it would the plastic. Once you get it this loose, you probably could use plastic tools on it. Um, now that we got all the pressure off that side, now it's moving easier. We'll switch over to this side. We should be able to get it easier now on this side. Yep, there's one, two, Three clips. Four clips. Now we should be able to just flip this forward towards the front of the system. You do want to be careful over here. You do have a button and an IR sensor. And also you want to watch your uh, USB port over here. They're not really attached to the plastic 100%. I mean the button and stuff is. It's an interesting setup how they actually pass through. There's actually another clip right up here in the front. Sometimes it'll come loose when you're getting the back as you pull it forward. Other times you gotta do the same fulcrum thing. But those buttons do hold it in place sometimes. There we go. And the clip is right about, let's see if I can show you. You want to pry right about here. That's where the clip resides, the one that's in the front. Like I said, sometimes you start bending it forward and it'll pop on its own. But then sometimes you got to pry. There is a second clip up here. This one should pop as you start to pry, but just for simple sake. You can also just pop it with this, so you don't have to deal with it while you're trying to make everything break loose. So it looks like there's two more clips. Never usually count clips until I'm doing one of these. Then you realize how many there actually are, and you're like, dang, that was more than I thought. And there we go. And like I said, button and stuff doesn't actually run through the plastic. It's literally just a little plastic piece, and the button is actually on the front board where the power button is. It's right here. These are very delicate components. You definitely don't want to break them, though. And the USB port, also probably something you won't damage through that plastic, but just to be a little more careful. Now next... Basically just got to take and make sure we got the right torque screw, which this is a T10 we're using. And 
and you're basically looking for the green screws. Those are our um, hold the system in screws, I guess you could say. Green for go, I don't know. Um, I don't know if there's an easy way to remember which ones they are. I actually just recognize the screws. They used to not be painted for you in other systems. I don't even think they were color coded. No, they were black in the original Xbox One, I believe. These are more reminiscent of uh, Xbox 360 screws in some ways. I don't think those were painted green either, though. Yeah, let me get all these out of here. This is a ratcheting screwdriver, but I'll try not to ratchet it too much on camera. Some stuff is louder on camera than it is in person. Another thing about screws, make sure you have somewhere to put them. The thing about the Xbox One is it does provide its own tray if you want. So, I mean, you could keep them all in there. I usually like something I can take and close up. Any kind of Altoid container, almost any kind of container works. But yeah, you can keep it sitting there, and then if for some reason you have to walk away from the system and not fix it all right then, close it up, and then if somebody knocks it over, you're not losing all your screws. I mean, this system's got pretty big screws, but I mean, especially when I'm working on cell phones, I want to have something to keep those screws in, or a magnetic mat to keep them in. Now when you're pulling the green screws, you will have, count them, one, two, three, four, five, okay. I can count three, four, five, six screws. Once again, something sometimes when you're used to working on the system, you don't actually even do. Once you get used to working on a lot of them. I haven't worked on as many S's as I have originals. Originals I've worked on a ton of. Mostly disk drive issues. Um, with anything that has a slot loading drive, somebody's going to take and put two disks in it or shove something that doesn't belong in it. So there's usually your most common problem with Xbox Ones. They do have weak lasers, um, but I haven't seen a laser failure yet. Um, I did have one come in that somebody had damaged the laser by whatever they put in the drive. I think if I remember right, they took a knife at the drive after they got something stuck in it. Or something along those lines. Now this starts to lift up pretty easily here. You can just start to grab a hold of the side here. Once you start to pull up like this, it'll just pop right loose, nice and easy for you. And then the other side should do about the same thing. You probably won't need any pry tools here. The whole system should pretty much drop right out of its uh, shell here. Start with the back though. Um, there's always stuff in the front that you don't want to like damage. So always start with the back. Let's see if we can... Get the front to pop loose for us. Yep. You basically just yank the system from the back once you got it turned down like this. Dig your fingers in like I got them. And then pull the front plate while you pull the system diagonal away from the front. That way you're not going to take and break off any of the boards or mess up anything to do with the drive. I also want to watch the new Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth card over here. Something else you don't want to mess up. I mean, unless you want to use wire controllers and never connect to the internet again. Obviously, you could have someone else fix it or buy the part, but work on one repair and make more damage is never a good idea. And once again, it's just plastic in here mostly. Just the push button, everything is all plastic. That's why they're not touch anymore. They feel almost like touch. They touch pretty or push pretty easily. They feel really nice. I do like the design of the S somewhat. I don't like how much smaller it is because I worry about overheating more then. I haven't heard too much about overheating, but I don't know. Um, from building uh, gaming PCs, it's one of those things that uh, I always worry about a little bit. Now on here, all of your T-screws are actually smaller. Same thing with up front here. You've got much smaller T-screws. Now, the metal plate on top should pretty much just come right off. There's no more screws to take out. It just wiggles its way right loose and pops out of the way. And over here's our disk drive. And that's what we're taking out today. Now each one of these has a set of screws underneath that go with it, like power supply, hard drive. Uh, fan is obviously the, the X one here. 
um, but you always gotta line it up. Um, remember, yep, O2 is here for the disk drive. I don't remember if the screws line up with O2. You can usually figure out kind of where they're at. See B1 right here, it says. I don't know if you can read that. But each one of them should have just a certain set of screws that come out. Looks like that B screw possibly and the C screws go to this one. So let's take and switch. Yes, the screws in the bottom are also the T10. So T10 will work on those also. So for this repair, we actually don't have to switch screwdrivers. Um, if you're a little worried about it while you're moving it around, you can take this off. Uh, this is probably a T9. Let me double check here. Actually, this set does not have a T9 in it. I knew I wasn't gonna probably need one. I'll grab out real quick here for you, my uh, smaller set, which uh, is a colorful set. I'll move it down here so maybe you can see it a little better. And these are my uh, smaller ones. Let's see, do we have a T9 in here? Actually, that's a T8 that might do it. T8s and T9s are so close, they'll usually work together. Yeah, T8 will do that one just fine. So these here are T8. It's going to be the same with all the rest of the black screws, which are all the ones in the front too. If you want to take these boards off and get them out of your way while you're working on a system, just in case you're worried you might damage them, uh, like this board here does stick up above. You could easily crack it in half while you're grabbing the system, not realizing what you're grabbing onto. But let's start with the C screws on 02 here for the drive. And see if the drive drops out of the way while we start taking those ones out. Okay, so we got C4, C5, and C3 it looks like. And you might want to put your hand up like I am and holding the drive in yourself so it doesn't just flop out because there are cords that connect it. You got your uh, SATA cable and your uh, uh, power cable to that. And if you break either of those, you're once again going to make your repair much more difficult. Since these are all the same one, they're all C's. I'm starting to feel the hard drive move and the... So it may not line up with the letters on the bottom. I was curious if it did. I usually just try to take out ones near where I need to be. But yeah, that feels like it more let the hard drive loose than the power... Than the, but the C5 also did release the drive, which the B did not need to come out for the drive. Probably should remove the hard drive though. That's probably why they listed them that way. Because it looks like the hard drive is somewhat in our way here. Kind of forgot about that. The hard drive does get in the way of the cords. Pull up the hard drive here. Flip it over like this. And you can see the two cords that are attached there. Just reach down and pull straight up. Make sure not to bend in any way. Pull straight up on the SATA connector. And over here, you got the power connector. Pull straight up on the power connector. The power connector isn't too bad to pull it by its cables. Um, it doesn't seem to hurt them. They seem to be a little bit higher gauge than what you'd think for power cords. They could use a thinner gauge, but it might be so that when they're getting yanked, they aren't getting broke. But as long as you're not taking and pulling it out of there like a dozen times. The drive actually has even thicker cable. I'm pretty sure it's one gauge higher than even the hard drive. So that's also another one that's safe to... Uh, Probably in kind of a little bit by its cables. You got pretty good connectors in there. Um, and you're pretty much not going to get it free much other way unless you have some kind of uh, cable puller that like grabs a hold of the plastic and pulls. You could use pliers to grab the plastic and yank up. If you're worried about it or if it's been taken apart a lot and you're worried you're finally just going to break it. So we're going to pull both the connectors, the SATA and the power cable loose for this one too. So now we got the disk drive out. And since I'm only worried about this drive, I'm going to set the rest of the system aside. Which, they label everything nicely in here for you. PWR's power, 
and showed you the hard drive, fan unit. All this stuff is pretty easy to replace if you have replacement parts. It's um, very modular inside the system. Hard drive's a pain if you're going to replace it because it does have a proprietary system. Okay, and then you got basically this enclosure here, which you got this little plastic piece here that you got to get out of the way. Which, since everything's going to be in your way for cables, you can just finish pulling the cables. Which, once again, this one here, I don't know if I want to pull it by its cable though. I usually try to get a hold of this down here, somewhat with these, because SATA can be a little more delicate. So I'm probably going to grab a pair of pliers real quick to pull on that, just to be on the safe side. My uh, nice pair of uh, Gerber pliers here. These are beautiful for whatever you need to do with them. They have all the extras in them. And basically you just lightly put it in there, squeeze down the connector, and once again, pull straight out. Never want to bend or twist. Unless it's a twist connector, which are rare anymore. Okay, got one more screw in here that's holding the plastic piece on. Still, they did not switch from T10 on it. Sorry about the ratcheting. So they still helped us out with if you anything disc drive related, you can do all of it with a T10. connector off here. So they still don't like the 100% let go too easily. Can pull down on this metal tab a little bit. Try to help loosen it. There is a rubber piece inside this. As you can see there's little pieces for it all around. And that's why it doesn't come off too easily. That's um, like a shock guard so nothing vibrates the drive and the disc flops around too much. And they're right in here and right in here. One second, my uh, camera is running low on power. I need to hook it up. One second. Sorry about that. Should have probably checked that before I started recording. Goes the battery pretty fast when you're recording. Hopefully I don't have it break. Or my mount, I mean. Okay. Now, hopefully no more interruptions. So yeah, there's your rubberized pieces down right here in the corner. They're black just like the things. So I don't think you can probably see them too well. Let me get the drive. Um, it actually is a Phillips head, which we should still have in here. Most tool sets should include a Phillips head, hopefully. I mean, they are the most commonly used screw probably ever. Don't use an oversized screwdriver. This one's probably almost too big for it. And as I said before, keep track of your screws. They just seem like, oh, they're all on the workbench. I'll get them all. Yeah. Be amazed how easy it is to still lose a screw that way. Trust me, I'm uh, talking from experience. I've had a few drop like that, and I'm like, oh, I'll get that one in a minute. And then all of a sudden, it's just gone. I've swept them up with my sleeves before on stuff. Uh, swept them underneath of a piece when I went to move a piece of plastic. Like you can just let the sucker drop and then you're like, oh, move the screwdriver out of the way. And you just swipe it over here, and all of a sudden it's gone. And you're like, where'd it go? Yeah, I have uh, lost a good amount of screws in my life. I usually keep extra systems on hand so that I don't have to worry about uh, well, broken systems on hand for parts. So I don't usually have to worry if I break a part or lose a part. But I assume if you're doing this at home, you may not have extra parts, which uh, then leaves you to still have to bring it to a repair shop after you just spent a mess of time yourself learning how to take it apart. Right here, we got a little bit of a sticky part here. You don't want to really rip it off. You can usually just peel it back, if depending on what you're doing inside the drive. Like me, I'm basically just investigating the drive mostly, but I'm still probably gonna pop the whole drive out. So I probably will have to peel it loose. Um, just because I want to be thorough on this one. I could just take a look inside and be like, oh, 
don't see anything, it looks fine. But I want to check the top side too, just to make sure there's nothing in the track of the disc. That maybe the discs are sliding by fine right now, but it's going to slowly scratch them or something. Uh, more than likely, it was probably paper related that got stuck in the drive, which is one of the more common things for kids to put inside the drive. I've seen credit cards, multiple discs, um, change. Um, kids seem to think game systems are piggy banks at times. Okay, so to get this apart, we do have to get this to pop, which it's the same as the Xbox original one, or Xbox One original, let me rephrase that. There's these little plastic clips up here, if I can get them close enough to the camera. And you see how there's like a ridge to the metal? You basically got to take your spludger again, and you just slide them underneath those, and they should pop somewhat out of the way. And that one started trying to break off on me. It's not a big deal if they do. The screws usually hold this thing together pretty good. But we're still going to put that back in place when we're done. And all you got left is a little dip right in there is probably still holding it. That's why it hasn't popped loose yet. You can usually just pop a spludger underneath there just a the littlest bit and pop up. The drive should start to slide forward. See there's some movement there now. Go to the other side, do the same thing, get a little tiny nibble, nipple off of there, and pop. Goes up there, up there, as you see all those will pop loose the rest of the way. I'm gonna push this one back down to make sure it pops back in place good, don't want it too bent out of the way. And then we're going to slide this out, which... Sometimes easier said than done. Push the plastic down away from the clips there. That makes it slide out easier. You just kind of push down like this to make it move back to the top. The whole thing just slides out of its casing. And uh, pretty much there's our drive. Looks like we've still got a good amount of grease here on the top. Nothing to drive that out. Basically check all the movement on these little parts here. It looks like all the parts are still sliding fine. None of them are popping up in the air. The Xbox One original had an issue with uh, this would start popping up in the air and it wouldn't read discs correctly. They'd hit the back of the drive. Because as you can notice, this drive is like the size of a disc still. So this is the same drive that's in the Xbox One original, the fat model. Uh, sometimes this will get worn out if something got stuck in it. I've seen these all completely gone. There's no teeth left. Just strip the entire rubber band. You replace the rubber band and it's good to go. Same thing with this rear band up here. I've seen it completely stretched out from uh, pulling on the drive too much. So it's just a few things you check to make sure the drive is in top working condition. This rear band can be replaced with a different one. Being that's inside the drive, you don't even have to worry about drying out too much. Some rear bands and some uh, drives will wear out by getting too warm. Make sure it looks like there's nothing else that could be wrong in there. Make sure laser movement's all good. Slides beautifully up and down, or back and forth I should say. Nothing's interfering with the cable. Check down anywhere we can see. Don't see anything in there. To double check inside, you can take and force the magnet back. If I can get it to do it. Use a little bit of a pry tool in there. Be very gentle with it though. You basically just need to flip it. Yep, pass there. You can slide the magnet out of the way, so you can kind of check down inside the drive even more. Do make sure to put the magnet back in the correct way that you pulled it out. You do not want to mess that up, which is of course the metal ring goes up. Which everything looks fine with this drive. And like I said, it was reading, so I didn't see any problem with the laser. Always check stuff before you start trying to take it apart. If it's some friend of yours thing, and they're like, oh yeah, I don't do this. Just let them know um, it does do that, but um, I'll still take it apart and look at it for you. Or if uh, it was diagnosed wrong by someone else and doesn't do anything at all, I've had some that do that. Comes in, disk drive isn't working. Go to power it on, it doesn't even get power. So some of the things you might want to watch out for with systems. Something else can be worse in there. I've seen liquid pour down in something, and at first just the drive isn't working, and... And also it fries the processor. And, well, 
<laughs> you don't want to be holding on to a system that uh, you fix the drive and the whole system doesn't work. Okay, so everything looks fine. Normally don't show too much of reassemblies. I will in this one some because it can be a little tricky to get this back together. I want to be very careful not to bump any of the plastic pieces as you slide this back in. So basically, if it feels like it's catching on something, slide it back a little bit, move it up and down some. These are the things that a lot of videos will not tell you that my videos will. So if you want more detail on something and really know how to take it apart, watch more of my videos. Um, like and subscribe if you can. Like I said, don't make any money off YouTube, but it's kind of a, I don't know, nice thing to see when somebody's uh, subscribed to you and viewed your videos and liked them and stuff to know if I'm doing a good job. And I do let people mail stuff to me if you want me to fix your stuff. I can even do a YouTube video of me fixing it if you want. So just send me a private message and ask uh, where to ship your stuff to if you want me to fix something for you. Um, I do require you to pay shipping both ways, of course, um, plus the repair cost through PayPal before I finish. Well, once I'm finished. I mean, you'll get to see it pretty much finished on YouTube before you get the system back, so I mean, you'll know it's working. Which is actually a really nice way to uh, show a customer that something's been fixed. Show them a video. So, uh, we got everything back in place there. A little nipple in there lines up. That's how you know it's clipped back in where it's supposed to be. All these ones up here are clipped back into the metal. Slides in pretty nicely as long as you don't get it caught on anything and really rip it loose because then you end up with parts really out of place. Now we basically just do this. Sorry about bumping the camera there. And we put it back in place, which once you get it back down, you can push the sticky part back against the plastic. And it just fits right into place there. Like I said, just run your fingers along this to stick it back into place. Basically just keeps the dust out of it. Not that it's dust guarded on the rest of the sides, but you know, every little bit helps, especially on the front end, because that's where all your dust is going to basically enter the system. Um, let's see. Let grab one of these screws here. And that's all the complicated stuff out of the way. Putting it back in is just the reverse. You just put the screws back in that you took out. Putting the plastic back together is pretty easy. Like I said, like, subscribe, and send me anything you want me to fix. Or get a hold of me, I should say. Everyone have a good one.